What's up guys, Rig Doctor here. I'm coming to you today with a really cool rig concept that I'm doing for my buddy Benjamin Forehand of Nashville, Tennessee. He has been having major problems over the years with TSA, taking apart his rig, changing things up, cutting off zip ties, taking off pedals, and that creates a lot of anxiety for musicians. When you get to your gig after you've flown, you open up your case and everything is disheveled. We're gonna rebuild his rig to make it TSA proof. So there's no chance that somebody from TSA can accidentally pull something apart, break something, or damage the pedal board. We're gonna get started. Let's do it. My name is Mason Marangella. I build rigs for the industry's top professionals. Now, I'm teaching guitarists how to build rigs like the pros with DIY tips, easy mods, and all the tricks of the trade. I am the Rig Doctor. How many trips do you need to do with this thing? Over 300. The, you see that? Like the wheel's just so gone, it's like... Do you know what the dimensions are now? 29.18. So the goal then is really smaller and making it so it's as close to impossible for TSA to Screw this thing up 100%. So quick update, we actually got the wrong dimension pedal boards. We opened three of them, none of them are quite the depth that we need. And are they even the length we need? Do we even have the right length on any of these? We don't know what we got. So quick snag, we'll see if we can work around it. Here into 28, 28 by 12. By 12, so about the same width. Yeah. But cutting it down by what? Four, five, five inches. inches. Five inches, okay. So where we are right now is we've got it all dialed in. <laughs> as far as size is concerned. And you know what I mean. <laughs> I don't get it. Anyway. Instead of using this size box, the higher interface box with the buffers, we're using a flat one and it fits right underneath here. It has a guitar, it has two sets of center returns, a summed mono, and then a left and right out. And then we'll have the power supply on this side. We're trying to figure out if we want a MIDI controller right here for the uh, Big Sky. And then we also have the Specular Tempest from GFI. So stay tuned. All right, so we're uh, kind of officially the day two. One problem that we figured out was that we could use the smaller pedal board and still make this work. However, we also made some space with this new board that we didn't have before, and so we decided to get a tap tempo and a favorites switch. We went to the local guitar center, and we picked up this Ernie Ball tap tempo. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this to a stereo plug on the input, the, the female jack, and then we're going to add another switch. So we're going to have this foot switch, which is going to be specifically for tap tempo. And then I'm going to add another foot switch over here. And that's going to be a favorite switch. And this is going to go to the specular tempest. Quick update. We retrofitted the tap tempo that was the Ernie Ball one we got yesterday at the Guitar Center to work with the uh, specular tempest. So we have uh, a tap tempo. And then on the top we have a favorites. Right now it's toggling between analog and tape echo. So here we are, second day. We're pretty much a mess. <laughs> We've reworked a few things. We've got a new volume pedal from Dunlop. We have built a custom tap tempo plus favorite foot switch for the specular tempest. And uh, done a little bit of reworking in terms of the interface got this custom interface here that's got tons of inputs and outputs essentially a guitar input uh, a set of send and returns so that you can have kind of like a 
pedal du jour sort of thing if you wanted to break out of the the pedal board and add some stuff into the signal chain. So we're probably going to divide this somewhere between the overdrive and modulation section. I have a mono mix, which is essentially a 50-50 sum of the left and right, and then also individual stereo output. You can get a little bit better than just a standard mono sum. It's also active, so it's buffered and all that. It has an input and output buffer. So this will be on the board. And this is the first thing we're going to do. We're going to put all the pedals down, at least in the front row, and kind of see where we are. And then I'll go about mounting the, uh, the tier for all of the time-based stuff and modulation-based stuff. So we'll get into that. Still going to use the same technique. Still going to be drawing out where all the pedals fit on the pedal board individually. So it's just tracing them out with a, with a pencil, marking what they are. And that makes it really easy when I go to put, say, the mating Velcro on the top and bottom of this. I know exactly where it's going to go, so I can stick it right down. And then everything will be a really good fit and be evenly spaced the same way that I've laid it out visually. So let's get into that. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just laying everything out in the way that I want on the board, tracing it out, making sure that I have all the pedals in the right place, and mounting that tier for the second row of pedals. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to tape out a nice line so I can get all of my wire dressing for the power cables uh, really dressed nicely into the power supply itself. And then uh, repeat the same with the uh, tier so that I can mount those power cables underneath. All right, guys, so we got day one, sort of day two, if you count, you know, second party yesterday, completely done. All right, let's see, moment of truth. Does it fire up? Oh, yeah. All right, we're good. So we got the board here, front row, back row, we got all the power done. If I lift up the tier here, you can kind of see a little bit of how we wired it. Nice clean lines there, all going into the power supply. Everything's firing up. Got our big buffer interface under here. Got a new volume pedal to replace the old Boss one, which is sitting under my wallet. Got a beautiful second row. This thing is incredible. Replace the timeline on this board. I'm really excited how this is gonna turn out tomorrow. We're gonna finish all the audio and get into some testing. Last thoughts, Ben. Zeke, what do you think? Zeke? Zeke? So there you have it. Until tomorrow. Alright, so we're day three. We got everything dialed in as far as power is concerned. We're going to go to audio and testing today. It's about 10 in the morning. We'll see how much we can get done by when. So here what I'm doing is I'm just trying to make sure that I'm using as much of the pre-existing cables as possible. That way I don't have to solder as many cables where it's not appropriate. And I'm just laying out nice straight lines and uh, sometimes I like to put a towel over the pedals so that I don't damage any when I'm in the process of soldering stuff that's real close to the, the base of each one of those pedals just to keep the paint together. <laughs> So I'm just dialing in the very end of the first row and getting the uh, insert position ready on the interface there so that it can break out between the uh, first row and second row if you wanted to add in additional pedals. Getting that second tier dialed in and just making sure I have all the cable links correct so that the uh, stereo output out of the specular tempest really fits in nicely into the uh, interface left and right so that we can run that in stereo and not have any issues or putting any stress on those cables. So what I'm doing here is just finishing up the uh, second tier and just making sure that I really nicely route my uh, output cables from the specular tempest into the input of the buffer interface. So I'm sort of going back and forth between both sides of the pedal board and really just double checking everything to make sure that my lengths are correct and that there's not going to be any unnecessary stress on those cables that are leading to the left and right outputs that would go to the stereo amplifiers or mono amplifier. Thank you.
So now that I've measured everything out on the back, I'm just putting things together, assembling the final uh, connections on the interface end and just making sure that those are fitting in perfectly and zip tying those in. So we have a nice neat straight line. I'm labeling up the uh, power supply, so I'm just getting all of those ready so that I can uh, know which we're going where. And then just finishing up the uh, very last on the front, wiring in the tap tempo with a TRS connector going to the auxiliary on the specular tempus. So, first test of the board, got it pretty much complete, we're going to try it in mono, and then if that works we'll run it in stereo inside. what happens when you mix left and right with an internal mixer at 50% of whatever the balance is coming out of the left and right since these are all wired in stereo from chorus to reverb to delay. So we just threw this guy on the scale. We got 23 pounds, eight ounces. So give it anything, the first test stereo. We're running the Showman right here. And then we have the Princeton reverb over there. So we're pretty much finished here. We got the uh, the rig pretty much 100% dialed. Check this thing. Got Mirage, Tone Secret, first board ever to feature the Tone Secret other than our NAM show boards, Ultraphonics, Vemram Janray, Steel String, Boost, Tap Tempo and Favorite Switch for the Specular, Tempest, Big Sky Action, Vertex Lando Chorus, Diamond Tremolo, Dunlop Volume Pedal, one of my favorites. It is dead quiet. We've even got two pedals on. This thing is dead quiet. I'm gonna go check in with Uncle Ben forehand, see what's up. We're working on the case. This is a super awesome, probably the coolest color Pelican case I've ever seen. So here we go. First insertion into the case. Let's just take a look at it. So this is inside the case. So add a little extra foam in there. It's gonna get in the sizing. All right, there it is. Bro, it's definitely lighter. Hold on. Like I can feel that. So you can feel that it's lighter already. Yeah. What's the overall difference? As you notice, you obviously you change some pedals, you change the timeline. Yeah, some of the layout is different. I mean, there's a lot less wasted space. So there's a lot less room for TSA to do their magic. So not only was the goal to make it more TSA proof, but the goal was decrease the size. Didn't really have any specific sonic goals other than to re-represent what you already had. We were able to fix the weight slightly. We were able to lower it about, by about eight pounds. So basically, same as before, smaller, just smaller, sleeker, more pedals less weight and that's how people normally describe me smaller sleeker more, more pedals, pedals less, less weight less weight yeah I'll, I'll link a picture to me from when ben and i first met mm -hmm.
So there you have it. We nailed this rig. We were not only to take off a couple of inches like I thought, we actually ended up getting the wrong pedal board altogether, but it ended up being a real blessing because we ended up, instead of taking just a couple inches off, we were able to take a full six inches off the depth. Instead of it being 28 by 18, we were able to get it to 28 by 12, so we saved a lot of space there. We were able to shave off about eight pounds. Originally it was around 50. We were able to get it just at 41 and some change. So really saved a bunch of space and weight with all those mods. We were able to add an extra pedal, a tap tempo, a more intricate buffering system with a mono mix and a left and right stereo out. So I'm confident that Ben's gonna be able to use this thing and fly with this thing for many years to come. I feel great that we were able to nail this thing for him and get him something that he can feel confident every time he opens it up. Thank you for watching. Please make sure that you like, you subscribe, you ask me questions if you have any about this rig or about your rig in particular, and I am happy to answer those. Until next time, adios.